speaking of the worldwide audience, let me begin the recording. We give a shout out to Abel Carr, who joined us last week from Cameroon. We give a shout out to Bishop Jacko in Kenya, Bishop Elijah in Kenya, to Pastor Boycott in Kenya, and to our friends all over the world. Hey, Annika in Sweden, we give a shout out to you and your family. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We praise God for all of our friends in Canada. We give a shout out to Sandra Lee. We give a shout out to Perry and Teresa in Nova Scotia. We give a shout out to all of our friends all across this nation. Christy Carpenter up in Idaho and her family. Uh, Zisla down in Texas. I see you out there, Zisla. Praise God. Megan, I know you're there. You're faithful. We thank God for your faithfulness. We thank God for this church family. Praise God. We thank God for what God is doing in our lives. And we thank God. We thank God for what God is doing internationally. All over the world, God is stretching forth his hands. Muslims are coming to Christ. Sikhs are coming to Christ. Uh, 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 Hindus are coming to Christ. We thank God that people all over the world are realizing that their religions just don't get it. Only Jesus can save. And so we give God the praise. We pray for those who are persecuted in other lands for righteousness sake. We have not seen that kind of persecution in this nation, but we want you to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Hard times are coming in America, ladies and gentlemen. Hard times are coming. Praise God. Uh, uh, but God is going to deliver his people. And so we're here to stand in the gap for this nation and the nations. We are here to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Ryan Trogler, we're here to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every tongue, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I thank God. I thank God for what he's doing in our lives. I thank God for what he's doing in your life. God has not forgotten you. You are important to him, to him and you are important to me. Praise God. We're going to look at a great message today. Uh, a great message today. It's great because the Holy Spirit is going to make it great. Uh, there's nothing I can do. It's the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Hagias Numa, the breath of God, the Spirit of God, who will take the Word of God and create something with it. That's the way we operate. That's the way we roll. We let the Holy Spirit bring forth the Word, and then the Holy Spirit anoints that Word, and the Word of God will not return until God void or empty. <coughs> It is not the preacher. It's not the charisma of the preacher. No, no, it's the Holy Spirit. See, this preacher is still sick in his body today. I'm not claiming it, but I still got this flu in my body. Been, been This is the second week, but hallelujah, I'm getting stronger in the Lord. I'm getting stronger in the Lord, and I'm realizing he whom God loves, he chastens. And, 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 and God is purifying me and sanctifying me unto his service. And I'm pouring out my soul to him, my heart to him, so that I realize that I can do nothing on my own. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about the Holy Spirit. So don't boast about anything, ladies and gentlemen. Don't boast about anything. Let your boasting be of the Lord. And about the Lord, what a mighty God <clears throat> we serve. That song that I keep playing over and over again, and we welcome Christina McDaniel, praise God, and all the people in Oklahoma. We welcome you. The song I keep playing every Sunday morning is All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Ladies and gentlemen, can you imagine? I want you to stretch your imagination. Can you imagine what it's going to be like 
Dusty and I, hey, Michael, can you imagine what it's going to be like when they make the announcement, bring forth the royal diadem, bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. We will be in heaven with God. <coughs> we will be in heaven with God and and the marriage of the Lamb will take place and the, the crowning of Jesus, the crowning of Jesus where they bring forth, uh, the angel will shout, bring forth the royal diadem and the royal crown will be brought and Jesus will be crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you one thing. You put your trust in Jesus, and you don't have to worry about a lying politician. He won't lie to you. He won't cover up. We've got politicians all over this nation. Everything coming out of their mouth is a lie to cover up previous lies. Ladies and gentlemen, once you start lying, you've got to keep on lying. There's no truth in a lie, but Jesus is the truth. He said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I am the life. The Lord laid on my heart this morning. He said, take your head out of the political arena. Pull your head up out of the politics. Pull your head up out of the political arena. He said, put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to say to you, uh, I want to say to Christians all across the land, all across the world, if, you're, if your life is depending on your political party, if your life is depending on on some political group in office, you have built your life on the wrong premises because kings live and kings die. Presidents live and presidents are removed. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not wishing anything on anybody, but unless you build your hopes on Jesus Christ, your, even your religion is in vain. And so I say to you, don't let the Republican Party be your guide or your God. Don't let the Democratic Party be your God. I know this may offend some of you, but Pastor Carter always calls it the way it is. I shoot from the hips. I, 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 I shoot those 45s and I blow them off. And, 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 and I thank God because, ladies and gentlemen, if you're building your hopes on, uh, uh, on being a member of the Republican Party or remember a member of the Democratic Party, if you're, if you're surrounding yourself by people uh, uh, who will stand and defiantly uh, call, the, call the president a MF, I mean a, 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 an elected official in this nation who will make an announcement, we're going to impeach that MF. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in for some difficult times. God is going to bring this nation to its knees. And so I say to you, pull your head up out of the political arena. Don't be overwhelmed by politics. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do it now. Do it today. And if you're in Kenya, don't put your trust in, in who is ruling in office. If you're in Cameroon, Abel Ka, don't put your trust in who is in office. <coughs> you are to obey those in authority, but don't make them your God because kings come and kings go. Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords, and so the day is coming, and you and I are going to be witnesses if we hold out until the end. Jackie Fisher, we will be witnesses in heaven when the angel announces, bring forth the royal diadem, bring forth the royal diadem, and we will crown him Lord of Lords and King of Kings forevermore. Praise God. Hallelujah. We have a king. We have a Lord who has never told a lie. He's never twisted the truth. He's never uh, uh, dealt with fake news. He's never deceived anybody. <coughs> he brings good news. He operates in good news. And so we need to worship God. We need to worship God. We need to bow down before Jesus. The Bible says, Every knee shall, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I refuse to build my life on politics, ladies and gentlemen. 
I refuse to uh, align myself with any particular politician because the Bible says all men are liars. That includes a lot of preachers. All men are liars. Jesus is the truth. Unless that person I have attached myself to is built on uh, Jesus Christ, I don't want to even associate myself with them. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in difficult times. It's time to make a choice. It's time to make a choice. <coughs> and so as we get ready, uh, I haven't even started preaching yet, Ryan. Uh, we're going to take about a 15-minute sermon, uh, and we're going to hear a word. God's got a word for you. God's got a word. God knows what you're going through, Megan. He knows what you're going through, Dustina. He knows what you're going through, Christina. Hey, Pastor Paul Begley. God knows what you're going through. He knows what you're going through. Uh, all of my friends are in the international arena. He knows the trials you're in. He knows those of you who are sick and those of you who are afflicted. He knows what you're going through. And so we're going to have a message in a moment, and it's going to be entitled, What to Do When You Are in the Pits. What to Do When You Are in the Pits. We're going to ask our intercessor and prayer warrior, Ryan Trogler, to pray for us now, pray for this message, pray for the strength for this pastor, pray for the people, Ryan. Come on, Ryan. Uh, good morning, Pastor Carter. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another beautiful day today because you've made it. Uh, Lord, we want to thank you for dying on the cross, shedding your blood for all of our sins so we can quite one day be free just so we can be up in heaven with you. <coughs> Excuse me. And, Father, we want to give Pastor Carter the strength to, go, to carry on this word that you've given him today. Heal him, Lord. Heal everybody who's been sick and have been afflicted by the, by these nasty demons out here. Heal everybody, because that's you know, that's what we're supposed to pray for. <clears throat> and, Lord, and Lord, please pray for my wife too, because she's pretty she's down with the flu pretty hard. And just Lord, we get as many souls as you as we possibly can. And Lord, we just want to say hey, we love you, praise you, we honor you, and glorify you. In Jesus Christ, precious name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. <clears throat> what a powerful prayer warrior you are. And Ryan's, Ryan's sick. His wife is sick. But you know, the best people to pray for those who are sick are people who are sick themselves because we are fighting for our healing and we believe God. So thank you, Ryan. As Ryan stands in the gap with us for the nation and for the nation's we stand in the gap for the sick all over the world. We pray for those who are, uh, are coming under heavy infirmities. We're praying, Dustina, for that family that you're praying for. We're praying uh, for, for those of you who have loved ones who are under the bondage of sickness and disease. We're praying, we're got, we're praying for those who are, are sick, and, and, and it looks like it ain't getting any better. And some of you are about to give up hope. I want to tell you, don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. It may look like it's getting worse, but God's got this. God's got this. God's got this. We welcome Mary Ellen York, University of Maryland. We welcome you, Mary Ellen. We welcome people from all over the nation, all over the world. Praise God. We welcome one of our friends from uh, uh, the international community. I see a 971-543-304-740. Is this Pastor Jacko? If so, please unmute your phone and say hello to us. Or is this Abel Cobb, somebody from the international community? We welcome you. <coughs> We thank God. We thank God. Come on and say hello to us. <clears throat> hello, Pastor Carter. Hello. Is this David? Yes, David Carter. Brother David Carter from Dubai. 
Ladies and gentlemen, hey, David Carter, how far is Dubai from the United States? It's pretty far, sir. <laughs> it's like a 16-hour plane ride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, did you hear that? A 16-hour plane ride, uh, which means about eight hours to uh, – uh, Munich or Paris or London, and then wait a couple hours, and then eight more hours of flying. Well, tell me, David, it, how are things going in Dubai? Everything is going great, Pastor. We're having a great time out here in Dubai. God's doing some awesome things. Um, we just actually had a, um, you know, celebrate the new year with some other believers here, some local believers here, and we had a great, great time. God, God is doing some great things. God is healing. Uh, um, saving people or from different nationalities and different um, religious backgrounds. Um, God is just doing the awesome things here in Dubai. Praise God. Praise God. What a mighty report. What a mighty report. Now, this is, you all are going on your third year there, right? Yes, our third year here. Yep. Yes, yes, sir. Wow. Our, our third year God. here, and, and we just, we, we really enjoying it, and this God is just doing some awesome things here, and just the favor of God. We just, we just been seeing the favor of God. And we just we just so blessed, you know, just to be around um, so many um, believers here. And we just we miss our family back home, but we're gonna actually be going home for the summer to visit them. And stuff. We're looking Praise forward to that. God. Praise God! Now, your precious wife is her name Nayanka. Yeah, yeah Nayoka. Yes, correct. Nayoka. Nayoka. Praise God! Give us yes. her our love, and and tell her we thank God for her courage. She's a teacher there, and for your courage and boldness. Ladies and gentlemen, it takes great courage and boldness to leave your country to go to another country to work and be a servant of the Lord in another country. And David and uh, uh, his precious wife and Biz are going on their third year there. Pray much for them. And David, we, we'd like to hear from you. We want to take a Sunday sometime soon, and, and we want to give you... Uh, Give, give the service to you, let you just talk to us and, and encourage the people here and people worldwide. We will record the message. Is that okay, David? Yeah, um, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir, Pastor. Praise God. And we look forward to that. We'll work out something. Uh, hopefully we can do that in the month of February, uh, <clears throat> maybe around Valentine's Day, somewhere around that time. But we'd like to hear from you and just uh, have to hear your testimony, bring your precious wife on, and let the people know what God is doing in the Mideast, in that part of the nation, in that part of the world, and, and how God is using you. In the meantime, we love you. Amen. We praise God. We embrace you, and, and, and we will stand in the gap with you. Amen? Amen. And we, we love you too, Pastor. We love the online church. We love how God is using you, his ministry. Um, even when I'm out online, you know, I'm, I'm out working and um sometimes i'd rather get home in time because it's night here <laughs> um yeah. by the time i get home but but we are truly blessed by the message i, I actually listen to the recording so um god is doing awesome things with his online church praise god praise, praise god. god praise god now it's about eleven thirty-two a.m eastern time here what is it, about nine thirty p.m in dubai yeah. yes correct yep yes sir <laughs> okay okay well praise god well bless god now we had planned we were planning on going to Africa this year, uh, but God has given us a fundraising project. We're gonna build a church in Africa. We're gonna help the Kenyans to build their first church, their their uh their church that's so much needed in western Kenya. And so wow. instead of making that trip to Kenya this year, we're Jackie and I were spearheading a fundraiser to raise up funds to build that church facility in Kenya. And then next year, we will visit that facility. And so next year, we'll get a chance to visit with you, okay? Okay, that sounds great. We're looking forward to it. Praise God, praise God, praise God. That's our friend, uh, David Carter in Dubai, ladies and gentlemen. He's, he's uh, from McKinley, Texas. McKinney, McKinney, Texas. And uh, that may be somewhere near you, Zizla. Zizla's from Midlothian. And so hopefully... You all can connect when uh, David and his family return to the States for a vacation in the summertime. Okay, open your Bibles, please, to Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18. This is a scripture we can lean on, depend on. Uh, 
It has never lost its power. The word of God has never lost its power. We serve a mighty God. Ladies and gentlemen, when we share the scripture, when we share the word of God, we're talking about the truth, the gospel, real news, no fake news. There's nothing covered up because God does not have to cover anything up. We serve a mighty God. And it, it uh, pays for us to obey every word of God. The scripture says, <clears throat> every word of God is pure. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so we want to reach out to those of you today who are suffering. We're going to reach out, Megan, to those of you who are hurting, those of you who are suffering affliction. We want to reach out, Jackie Fisher, to those of you who are bombarded with, with illnesses and, and, and seem like every phone call is something bad. We want to reach out, Dustina, to those of you who are standing in the gap for a region, for a nation, and, and are saddened and are being hurt and crushed by the deterioration of men's and women's lives. We want to reach out, Ryan, for those of you who are standing in the gap for this nation and, and seeing all the political mess, the garbage, the, the garbage that are coming out of the mouths of our elected officials, the garbage and how people have allowed themselves to become uh, so low that they, we have never been this low in the history of this nation. We want to reach out. God wants to bring holiness and righteousness to the nation. And so my subject is when you, what to do when you are in the pits. What to do when you are in the pits. Some of us have been in the pits. Some of us will be in the pits. Let me tell you, hey, Dustina, it ain't a good feeling being in the pits. We've got people on who come online on a regular basis, and, and they're, they're in the pits of adultery. We've got people who are in the pits of hatred. We got people who smile at us every day, every Sunday, but in the pits of racism. We've got people who, who come online, they're in the pits of drugs and drug addiction. We've got people who listen in on this program, whether live or uh, via the recording, who are, are, are determined that they're going to not love their neighbor. We, we've got people who are in the pits of hatred. We've got people who are smiling on the outside but are being destroyed, eaten up on the inside. If you think this flu is bad, this flu that is going on, and if you had a taste of it or, it's, or if it's had a taste of you, this flu ain't nothing compared to the way that hatred is eating people up on the inside. And I'm talking about people in the body of Christ people who call themselves Christians, people who will put a political party above Jesus and will defend a lying leader or a lying politician, no matter what district they're from, they will defend their liar, their lying leader to the T, whether it's a, re a representative or a senator or a judge, they will defend that person to the T and will support them, not only with their lives, but with their money, with their household, and they will even stand and take a bullet for them. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, God is getting tired of the mess that we're in. He sends preacher after preacher, prophet after prophet, apostle after apostle, pastor after pastor, evangelist after evangelist, and he shares his word. He brings his word, and there are people who even hate on the preachers. There are people who hate Paul Begley. There are people who hate me. There are people who will hate you, David Carter. There are people who will hate you, Jackie Fisher. There are people who will hate you, Megan. There are people who will hate you, Dustina. There are people who will hate you, uh, Wayne. There are people who will hate you because you stand on the word of God, and nobody wants to be hated. Nobody likes being hated. Ladies and gentlemen, every now and then we want to hear good news from somebody. We want to hear a blessing. We want to hear somebody call and say, hey, you're doing a great work. But ladies and gentlemen, there are some of us who are in the pits. 
It may be the pits of politics. It may be the pits of pride. We've got people who come on regularly and are living in a sin and adultery. Ladies and gentlemen, because you attend church, whether it's the brick and mortar church or the online church, but if you continue in sin, and, and no matter who you are, I love you all, but if you continue in sin, you're going to bust hell wide open unless you repent. I've got a friend, a, 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 a classmate, a college classmate. He refuses to speak to me anymore because I preach the gospel. I told him you must be born again. With all the degrees you've got, with all the great education you've got, and yet, uh, 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 and, 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 and yet you don't know Jesus, and he does me, and he called me, cussed me out, called me. I mean, the guy I went to college with shared my food, my care packages that my mama sent to me when I was in college. I shared with this guy. But now he's got a doctor's degree. He's a, he's a well-known physician, and this and that, and nobody can tell him anything. And, 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 and he cussed me out. He called me and cussed me out because I would not allow him to talk about, uh, to pr promote uh, 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 politics on this program. No, this, I'm a preacher. I ain't a politician. I'm a preacher. I'm not called to promote politicians. I'm called to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if it means that I've got to separate myself from you, then I'm going to shake the dust off my feet. Amen. That includes family members. Amen. If Jackie won't go all the way with Jesus, i got to shake her off. But I expect her to go all the way. If my children don't go all the way, you hear me, niece, Waynette? If my children, my nephews and nieces, decide they're going to turn around, I'm not going to turn around because you're going to turn around. Well, you'll say, well, uncle, you don't know the pits I'm in. Or dad, you don't know the pits I'm in. Or pop, pop, you don't know the pits I'm in. Or Pastor Carter, you don't know what I'm going through. No, I don't. I don't know what you're going through. But I do know this. The Bible says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I feel my help coming, Ryan. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not wrestling against neighbors or friends or relatives or husbands or wives or people. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not our battle. We're not wrestling against uh, 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 President Trump or Vice President Pence or uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer. We're not wrestling against them. Ladies and gentlemen, we're wrestling against principalities and powers and ruler spirits and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. This is the gospel that we preach. We're not wrestling against people. People are not our enemies. The Republicans are not my enemies. The Democrats are not my enemies. But I refuse to go where they're trying to lead me because I've given myself to Jesus Christ and I refuse to dwell in the pit that they try to put, try to put us in. <clears throat> that they try to put us in. You don't have to stay in that pit. You don't have to stay in that pit that your family has put you in because you did not please them Christmas time. You don't have to stay in that pit that your children have put you in because they have blackmailed you, because they caught you doing something you should not do. No, 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 a thousand times no. What to do when you're in the pits? Ephesians 6, 13, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, ladies and gentlemen, if you do not put on the full armor of God, whether you're in America, you're in Canada, in Mexico, England, France, Germany, Russia, China, uh, Kenya, Tanzania, wherever you are, unless you put on the full armor of God, 
you will not be able to stand in the evil day. If you think things are rough now, you've been afflicted by the flu. You've been bed, bedridden for a whole week. It's going to get worse, ladies and gentlemen. Sin is rampant in this nation. And when God blows the covers off this nation and exposes this political system for the filthy, corrupt institution it is, there are going to be a lot of people who have no place to escape. That is why we preach the gospel. We say, come to Jesus. All oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Now, if the angels fall on their faces prostrate before the Lord, then we need to fall on our faces before the Lord. We've got to get rid of this foolish pride. The pride that we have because our skin is a different color from somebody else's. Or our hair is a different texture than someone else's. Or I got blue eyes and you got brown eyes or you got green eyes or you got gray eyes. We've got to get rid of this, this whole thing. Or I have Nordic features. I've got blonde hair. Uh, 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 no, no. We've got to get rid of this kind of thinking. No man is better than any other. God made us all in his image. Don't let this system deceive you into thinking more highly of, of yourself than what you ought. Because when the deal goes down, when the, 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 the real enemy of the Lord is exposed in this nation and in your nations, unless you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you will not survive. I'm talking to me first. I'm preaching to the choir. Unless you have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so my doctor friend, he called me and cussed me out. But I don't care. I don't care. He has to come back before it's long. I hope he does. I would rather offend him with the gospel and preach the gospel and tell him you must be born again those degrees will not save you or that political connection you have in Washington, D.C., that green light you have to walk in the White House anytime you want to, that is only temporary. But can you walk into heaven, into the presence of God? Can you lay hold to eternal life? People don't want to hear that, ladies and gentlemen. Dustina, they fight against that. They will hate you for preaching the gospel. They will hate you. You go to Walmart or to the supermarket, and they will look at you with disdain. Oh, there she is. That's that preacher. Ladies and gentlemen, keep on preaching. It is not easy being a preacher. It is not easy, Jackie Fisher, being sold out to the Lord. Sometimes you might be the only person in your household who loves the Lord. I know many people who are like that. I've got many followers, and they're not following me. They're following the Lord Jesus Christ, but they're, they're following via this ministry. I know many people. They're the only ones in their household taking a stand for Jesus. I could name women, and I refuse to do so, who are being abused physically. Because they follow Jesus. I can name countless numbers of women who in the years that I've been a pastor who have been beaten by their husbands because they follow Jesus. Men hate it when women give their affection to another so-called king. Most men think that they are king of kings. And they will fight you. Your family members will fight you. Your mama will fight you. Your daddy will fight you. Your grandmama will fight you. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Our fight is not against people, ladies and gentlemen. Our fight is not against people. Many of you are catching hell in your personal relationships. Many of you are catching hell even in your marriage. Many of you are catching hell even in your family. 
Oh, all right. They, they, they love you. They're very tender to you if, if they think you're going to die or if they think, they think you're very sick. But when you get your strength back and you stand up and take your stand and you get back on the wall, they're going to keep on hating you. And what are you going to do about it? So my message is what to do when you are in the pits. When you're in the pit of hatred. Joseph was thrown into a pit by his brothers. They hated him. They were jealous of him. They were envious of him. They wanted him dead. Some of you have family members. They want you dead. They want you dead, and if you die, that means you don't get any inheritance. That means war for them. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, listen, well, let's look at this realistically. Some of you have so-called friends. They wish you dead. Some of you ladies have girlfriends. They wish you dead so that they can get your husband. Some of you have husbands. They wish you dead so they can get uh, uh, another woman. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about reality. We're talking about the reality of satanic oppression. And we're talking about a world system that is not loving and does not want to love as Jesus loves. So the Bible says, stand therefore when you find yourself in the pit, in addition to all these things that people are throwing on you, in addition to this nasty political arena, you're talking, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing phlegm and inflammation from this flu, and praise God, it's breaking up and I'm coughing it up. I don't want to get gross with you, but when you talk about phlegm, look at the phlegm that's in Washington, D.C. Look at the phlegm in the White House. Look at the phlegm in Congress. I mean, look at the cough up that people are wading through in Congress. Look at the phlegm of uh, uh, CNN News and Fox News and the stuff that they try to give to us in trying to justify an ungodly nation with ungodly leaders. We're talking about pits. Joseph was thrown into a pit, a slimy pit. He could have drowned in that pit in the muck, in the mire. Jeremiah was hated so much because he preached the word of God. They, the leaders, threw him in a pit and put a rock over the top of the pit to seal him in, to suffocate him so that he could drown in the slime in the pit. Ladies and gentlemen, and the devil wants to put you in a pit. First of all, he wants to get you to sin, to deny God. He wants you to hang out with people who deny God. Some of you are so hurting for people to love you and for people to like you. And we've got people all over Facebook. Facebook loves to people to like them. So many people want to be liked. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't need all those likes because they may like me today and hate me tomorrow. I don't live. I don't thrive off likes. I thrive off the love of Jesus Christ. And so should you. Greater is he in us than he that's in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth having on the breastplate of righteousness. Lord, we need leaders in this nation who will gird their loins with truth, who will put on the belt of truth, who will not be sexual perverts, who will not be adulterers, who will not be abusers, who will not be molesters, who will stand for the truth, who will be men and women of integrity, having on the breastplate of righteousness, whose hearts are pure and protected by the breastplate of righteousness. Lord God, I, my heart is heavy for the church. I'm talking about leaders in the church, big name preachers and leaders, bishops and leaders in the church, men and women of influence who have aligned themselves with political leaders 
for personal gain and have sold their souls to the corrupt political system for advantage and are afraid to preach the truth. I asked Pastor Paul Begley a few weeks ago, Pastor Paul, how come I don't hear any white men preaching against racism? Why does it have to be black men and black women preaching against racism? I said, Pastor Paul, racism is evil. And it's entrenched in the hearts of most preachers in this nation. And if they claim to be born again, why don't they preach against this evil? Pastor Paul said, Pastor Carter, they ain't going to do it. They ain't going to do it. And I think it's a sin and a shame to gloss over an area where this nation is killing one another, hating on one another, because certain people think they're better than anyone else, uh, who have this uh, sense of manifest destiny, who were taught uh, erroneously that God has given this nation coast to coast to people of a certain complexion, a certain skin color, and they're to rule as the master race. This is a sin. Jesus died on the cross that all men, all women, all boys, all girls can have the right to the tree of life. Jesus did not count it robbery to leave heaven and to come on earth and to live as a man for 33 years, yet without sin. He did not take on the politics of the Sadducees or the Pharisees and embrace them in his ministry. He did not compromise with the scribes and the evil rulers of that day. Jesus stood on the word of God, and he depended and trusted in the Holy Spirit to guide him into all truth. And I say, I say to all of you, no matter whether, if you're American, or if you're or, or of another nation, if you are a follower of Jesus, then why not preach the truth and live it? You say, well, Pastor Carter, what you're preaching is scary. Well, what Jesus preached is scary. So scary, it cost him his life. They crucified him. They nailed him to a tree. Well, Pastor Carter, I don't know if I can pay that kind of price. Then Jesus said, if anyone uh, will follow after me, uh, he or she must suffer persecution. Jesus said, anyone who puts their hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom. And if you're not willing, if you're not willing to lay down your life for Jesus and obey him and not just preach it, but walk the walk. Don't just talk the talk. Walk the walk. If you're not willing, then your, your, your religion is in vain. I don't want to go through this life having been a phony or being or I have someone label, label me to say he was scared. He was afraid to preach the truth. No, 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 no. I go on record for preaching the truth. And, and like Job says, though he slay me, yet I will trust him. I, 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 I believe to see my Redeemer. I know that my Redeemer lives. Come too far to turn around. I challenge you, ladies and gentlemen. When you're in the pits, when the problems and the troubles of this world overwhelm you, when the slime and the phlegm and the inflammation and the puke and the vomit and the spit up from the corruption and the ugliness of the lives of people overwhelms you and, and covers your soul like Jeremiah in the pit and, and Joseph in the pit, When this happens, plus when you have relatives who hate on you, friends who call you and cuss you out, people who hate you because you are determined to preach Christ Jesus. What to do when you're in the pits? The scripture says, having done all, stand. Hallelujah. 
I like that part, Ryan. Having done all, stand. Well, preacher, I'm going through all that, what you're talking about. And plus, man, I mean, this flu, man, this, I've never had a flu like this. My body's never ached like this. I've never been so congested. Having done all, stand, Ryan. Uh, uh, Zisla, they say, well, Pastor Carl, it's rough down here in Texas. I mean, I mean, people are just dropping dead like flies. Having done all, stand, Zisla. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Stand on the word of God. Stand on the word of God. God will hasten his word to perform it. Jackie Fisher, God will hasten his word to perform it. God said, my word will not return unto me void or empty. It will accomplish that which I have purposed it to do. And it will prosper in the thing wherein I sent it. And so what to do when you're in the pits? Love the Lord with all your heart. When trials come, love the Lord with all your heart. Worship the Lord. Fast and pray. Study the word of God. Fast and pray some more. <coughs> Study the word of God more. Spend more time in the presence of God. And when it looks like the flood is going to overwhelm you, and when friends call you and curse you, and when loved ones uh, look at you with disdain, keep on fasting, keep on praying, keep on trusting in the Lord. For I see Jesus hanging on the cross. He took all of our sins into his body. All of our iniquities and sins were nailed into his body. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. He did not die for white people alone. He did not die for black people alone. He did not die for Asians alone. He died for all mankind. And the scripture says, and let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. When you're in the pits, when your heart is overwhelmed, ask the Holy Spirit, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock and stand upon the rock. Stand upon that solid rock. Stand upon Jesus and wait on the Lord. Well, how long shall I wait, Pastor? Seems like I've been in the pits for a long time. You keep on waiting. Keep on waiting, Christy Carpenter. Don't quit. Don't give up. Keep on waiting. God knows when to show up. He's a mighty good God. He knows when to show up. Hey, Wayne Cox, how long shall I wait, Uncle? You keep waiting until your change come. Wait until <laughs> your change come. Job said, I'm going to wait until my change comes. Amen. That's how long you wait. Well, when you see your friends getting tired and they drop off like flies, they're tired of waiting, you keep on waiting. Daniel set his face to the Lord and prayed unto the Lord, and he interceded about his nation. He was concerned about the nation. God, what are you going to do about this nation? This nation has sinned against you. What is going to happen to our people? And he waited. He was persecuted. He received death sentences. Sickness came upon him. But he waited on the Lord, Ryan. Day, Daniel waited on the Lord. And then the angel of the Lord appeared to Daniel. 21 days after Daniel set the fast and called on the Lord, the angel appeared and said, Daniel, God heard you when you turned your heart to him. And when you commanded the fast, and when you prayed, God heard you. And God sent me 21 days ago. He sent me to bring you your answer. I've had to fight through the powers and principalities. The ruling spirits in this wicked world, I've had to fight all kinds of demonic powers to get to you. I was so caught up in battle to get you your answer and get you your blessing and to bring you your deliverance. 
that I had to call on Michael the Archangel to come and help me in this battle. And now here I am, and here is what the Lord will have for you, and here's what the Lord is going to do with your nation. Ladies and gentlemen, we learn so much from Daniel. Daniel teaches us to wait on the Lord. No matter what your sickness is saying to you, no matter what your doctors are saying, no matter what your body is saying to you, listen to the voice of the Lord. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. No matter if all your friends and all your family desert you and leave you, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I will in no wise cast out all whom the Father has given unto me. Wait on the Lord. I know this is a good message because it's come straight from heaven. I know God is going to bless somebody. I know God has touched somebody's spirit today. I know somebody who felt like giving up has determined I'm going to go on. I'm going to run on and see what the end is going to be. I'm going to run on. The songwriter says, see those heavy burdens. They can't last. God is going to make a way. Turn your midnight into day. Satan had me bound. I felt like giving up. But something deep inside of me makes me keep going on. Hey, Megan, see those heavy burdens? They won't last. Hey, Zizla, they won't last. Dustina, they won't last. God is going to make a way. Turn our midnights into day. Yes, yes, Satan had me bound. I felt like giving up. But something deep inside of me makes me keep going on. Daniel had something deep inside of him that would make him keep going on. Joseph had something deep inside of him makes him keep going on. Paul the apostle had something deep inside of him. Peter, James, and John had something deep inside of him. And you and I have something deep inside of us. Something within that holdeth the reins. Something within. And that something within us is the Holy Spirit. We've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. And the moment you give your heart to Jesus, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And sealed by the Holy Ghost. And nothing, no power, no president, no king, no congress, no legislature, no kingdom can separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. And so I say to you, keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. And if you're listening today and you want to be saved, you can be saved. Well, how can I be saved, Pastor Carter? The Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's Romans 10, 9, and 10. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You shall. That's a promise. That's a promise. Praise God. Father God, I thank you. I love you and bless you and honor you and praise you. Thank you for who you are, Lord. You are the mighty God. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. All of our trust is in you. We have hope as an anchor for our souls. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you made all this possible on Calvary when you died for all mankind. Thank you that you are no respecter of person, skin color, ethnicity, finances. You are no respecter of persons, but you died for all, for all. And I thank you. Now, Lord, <coughs> bring healing to people. Bring healing to this, your servant. Bring healing to the land. Bring healing to the nations. You are Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah. You are the God who heals, and we put our trust in you. Teach us to wait on you, Lord. Teach us to wait on you, and we thank you. Save today, Lord. Heal, deliver, add daily, such as should be saved, and bless your people, Lord, 
as we exalt you and proclaim you Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We praise you. Thank you for this message today. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you. Now bless every family, every household in the name of Jesus. Don't let them give up, Lord. Don't let them give up. Help them to keep looking, looking up, Lord God. Hallelujah. Because you're always looking down on us. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We give God the praise. We give God a shout out. Hallelujah. The angel's going to say, bring forth. Bring forth. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth. Bring forth. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. I want to be in that number. I want to be in that number. I want to be in that number, Dustina. I want to be in that number when we crown him Lord of all. Lord of all. Somebody said years ago, you can't crown him till I get there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I may get there before you, but we can't crown him till you get there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bring forth the royal diadem. Bring forth the royal diadem. Hallelujah. You haven't seen a coronation. You haven't seen an inauguration like the one we're going to see when we crown Jesus, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Praise God. Praise God. The Bible says they will be coming up from the north, east, south, and west with their testimonies of how God brought us through. So endure these temptations. Endure these afflictions. Endure uh, being in the pit this is only temporary. The pit is not your permanent home. I say the pit is not your permanent home. Hallelujah. God delivered Joseph from the pit. God delivered Jeremiah from the pit. David said, I waited patiently on the Lord, and he inclined unto me, and he brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of a miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and he put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and shall fear and shall trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. The pit is not my home. The pit is not your home. Shake somebody. Shake somebody. Grab them by the shoulder and say, the pit is not your home. Hallelujah. I've got a home up in that kingdom. Ain't that good news? Ain't that good news? i got a home up in that kingdom. Ain't that good news? Ain't that good news? Hallelujah. 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 All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. We're going to crown him. We're going to crown him. And when we crown him, we will be so glad that we endure these afflictions, these temptations, these troubles. Hallelujah. See, the, we'll be able to say to one another, see those heavy burdens. They won't last. God is going to make a way. Turn our midnights into day. Satan had me bound. I felt like giving up. But something deep inside of me made me keep going on. We've got something within us, ladies and gentlemen. You've got something in you. Greater is he in you than he that's in the world. That's scripture. That's the gospel. Greater is he in you than he that's in the world. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We give you the praise, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, praise God, praise God. Well, that's about it for this day. Mm, I feel good. I feel good. I feel good down in my soul. There's something about serving the Lord makes me feel good. Hallelujah. He's brought us from a mighty long way. He's brought us from a mighty long way. Somebody's going to be running down the street soon saying, Look at me. I have been set free. All my sins have gone away. All my doubts have gone away. Christ is here to stay. Look at me. I have been set free. Somebody might go, go to the family reunion next year and say, Look at me. I have been set free. All my sins have gone away. Remember what you used to think about me? Remember the names you called me? Remember the way you looked at me with disdain? But look at me. I have been set free. All my sins have gone away. All my doubts have gone away. Christ is here to stay. 
greater is he in us than he that's in the world. I'm trying to close out, Dustina. I'm trying my best to close out. I'm trying my best to close out. Lord God, I thank you for this word, this word. Let your word not return unto you, Lord. Lord, reach out your hand and touch somebody today. Touch them, God. Heal them. Heal them, Lord God. Heal all who stand in need of, of healing. We praise you, Lord God. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are the healer. Deliver people from the pits, God. Many people are, are in financial pits. Many people are unemployed, in need of jobs. Many have sickness and disease in the family. Many are facing infirmity. Oh, God, you are God. Hallelujah. You are God. We trust you, Lord God. We trust you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. Thank you that the chastisement for our peace was upon you. And with your stripes, hallelujah, we are already healed. You paid the price. And so we appropriate healing, deliverance, salvation, and strength from you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Well, bless God. Well, bless God. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. Okay. I know we've gone a little bit over our time, uh, but we still have about 15 minutes at, for prayer and, and, and testimonies. If anyone wants to unmute your phone, uh, please do so at this time. Come in, David Carter from Dubai. Hey, Pastor. Um, that was a powerful, powerful message. Um, hello? Hello, I hear you. Yeah. Yes, sir. I had my, I'm trying to get that. It was like an echo. Um, what, a, what a message, you know. What to do when you're in the pit. <laughs> That was a powerful message. Oh, so, so much revelation. Um, I, I'm like you, sir. I feel good down in my soul after hearing that powerful message. Hallelujah. <laughs> I might just I gonna do my little shout pretty soon. I feel like dancing. Oh, man. I feel like dancing. I, can, I just can't stop dancing. Oh, no. Oh, I just can't stop. Now, Archie Bell and the Drill from Houston, Texas sang that first, but I don't know if they knew what I know. Now, see, with Jesus deep down inside of us, David, I just can't stop dancing. Oh, no. I just can't stop dancing. Oh, no. Come on, give God a shout. Amen. Praise somebody. <laughs> hey, man, that, what, what, what a powerful word. I, I'm, I'm out here dancing in Dubai um, because it's like, like, like as, you, as you mentioned, sir, it's like um, he delivered David out of the pit, Jeremiah, um, the Apostle Paul. He delivered those men out of the pit. He, he's surely not going to leave us in the pit. And how and how you say the key that we have to stand, stand. You know we have to stand. We have to stand and we have to wait, wait and stand yeah. on the Lord. You know, and He will deliver us from the pit. You know, um, it doesn't matter the pit that we're in. Doesn't matter how deep it is. Doesn't matter how long we've been in the pit. Um, God is faithful and He's all powerful. Deliver us from any pit that we're in. And that's that's we have to um, just hold on to that word because the enemy would try to discourage us. Um, you know, even in our sickness, or it doesn't matter what we're going through in life. I don't care if it's financial, or whatever. Uh, he said that you've been in the pit long, so long, so many years, and God is not going to deliver you, but He's faithful. And as you say, that all the men that God delivered, He, he He's an expert of delivering men and women out of pits. So I just praise God for the word, sir. And, and I pray that God will heal you. I um, pray that God uh, will heal Juan and his wife and. Uh, um, just pray God's blessing upon those who are sick, um, those who are uh, um, under that, that 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 flu bug, and I just pray healing because God's the word of God says that with His stripes we are healed. So I just pray healing over you, Pastor. Ryan, Ryan, I'm praying healing over you and your wife, and it's over everybody else on on, on the line um, who needs healing. We receive it. We receive healing by faith in the name of Jesus. Ryan, I stretch my hand out to you. I stretch my hand out yes. to everyone else who's sick. Thank, Thank you, David Jesus. Carter, for that word from the Lord. We receive healing from you, Lord God. You Thank are the God who healeth us, and we receive it now. We do not, not look at the symptoms. We walk by faith and not by sight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Praise God. In Jesus Hallelujah. Name. Amen. Paratrogler, you're healed in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. 
Praise God. Thank you, David. Praise God. We'll Amen. hear more from you and from Dubai at, at a later time. God loves you and we love you. Have a good night, David. Okay, God bless, Pastor. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone else? Uh, anyone else want to comment? I have a picture of our intercessors, Paul Begley intercessors on, on the screen. Any else, anyone, anyone else want to unmute your phone and say hello? Praise God, praise God. Well, we're announcing, announcing our, just want to put this on, announcing our, our fundraiser. For 2019. Now, those of you who've been with me for a while, you know I very rarely ask for money. Very rarely. But God has given us a fundraiser. We're building a church. We are building a church in Kenya. It's time for them to have their own building, the Lord says. So our fundraiser for 2019, we're building a church for Ke in Kenya. The building project will cost $15,000 U.S. With $15,000, we'll be able to build a, a wonderful church facility for the saints there in western Ke Kenya. Right now, they meet under the trees, ladies and gentlemen. They have not been blessed to have brick and mortar buildings like we have. They meet under the trees. If it rains, they get wet. If the ground gets soaked, they get they get muddy. It'll cost us fifteen thousand dollars to build a church. And for evangelistic quarters. For Bishop Elijah, and visiting ministers, and their families. Now in Kenya, there's no big thing for them to travel 100 miles to get to a service. When I preached in Kenya several years ago, a man rode a bicycle, an older man. He was much older than I. He had a bicycle. He rode 25 miles on a bicycle to get to the service, which was on that mountainside. Praise God. And so we want you to go to my GoFundMe. Please go to <coughs> GoFundMe page at Back to Basics Ministries. Ministries Incorporated. Go to my GoFundMe page to Back to Basics Ministries Incorporated. Several of you have given already. We thank you for your gifts and donations. I believe that by July 1st, we'll have all this money in, the $15,000, and that over the summer, they can construct the church and the evangelistic uh, quarters for the ministers. Praise God. We ask that you give what God lays on your heart. If you want to give on a regular basis, do so. Whatever you give, so $5, $10, $25, $100. If you can give $1,000, do that. Jack and I, we're committed to, Jack and I, we're committed to $2,500. Jackie and I, we're committed to $2,500. We're not saying this to boast, but that's the money we would be paying uh, if we were flying to Nairobi, Kenya this year. But instead, in lieu of flying to Nairobi and ministering in Nairobi this year, we're going to send that, that uh, airline fee and the cost uh, of that missions trip, $2,500. We're going to 
I'll donate that to the GoFundMe page. Praise God. You do the best you can. We're looking at people who love the Lord and come rain or shine. If it's raining, they're out there in, in, in the field worshiping God. Uh, if the sun shines, they're out there. Many of them have suffered through malaria and sickness and disease. They've never had <coughs> a building of their own. Some of them don't have, have houses to live in. I can see right now that there will be many homeless living in the church when we build that church. Because that's the spirit of love that the Kenyans have for one another and for anyone else. So we ask you to go visit my fun, GoFundMe page uh, and do what you can do. You'll find the, Go, the GoFundMe page. I started this page several years ago, but that was for another uh, uh, um, program. But I, I've renewed that page, and so the date might be a little bit different, but um, we want you to give. If you have any questions, e email me. Call me. Talk to me. And um, make your donations private. We're not going <coughs> to advertise who gives what. I just mentioned what Jackie and I are going to give. Because I think if we're going to ask, then we ought to set the tone for giving. And we're not doing this for any self-aggrandizement, but to give glory and honor to God. So we love you. We bless you and praise you. Anyone else have any questions before we go offline today? The video will be ready in about another hour, another half hour, and we pray that you'll be able to listen to this message again. I felt the anointing of God. Hey, Megan, I felt the anointing of God. Ryan, I felt the anointing of God. Um, Pastor uh, Carter was weak today, but the Lord is my strength. And that's the way we roll. Uh, empty yourself of self and trust the Holy Spirit. No matter what the task is, trust Trust the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> okay, God bless you. I'm going back to bed. God be with you. Thanks for your prayers. We love you.